My formal name is Rachel Fryer. My friends call me Ruchi, and my title is um, a judge. I was elected for the civil court, but I'm sitting in the criminal court in Brooklyn. So first and foremost, I'm a girl from Borough Park. I'm a wife and a mother, and Baruch Hashem, a grandmother. And um, raising my family really is my primary role. And what I do in addition to that is I work in the legal profession. I started out as a legal secretary, a maskira, as you say. And then um, I wanted to advance, and eventually I became a paralegal, then I became a lawyer. And my dream always was to become a judge. So now I am Baruch Hashem, a judge. So um, my dream was to become a judge, but I didn't realize was that I would end up becoming the, the first woman who's from a Hasidish background, who has a Hasidish family, that would become a judge. So I am the wife of a Hasid, a Bab of a Hasid, and I'm very proud to be that. My family is Hasidish, and um, at the same time, I can still maintain my standards as a, as a Hasidic woman and still be a judge at the same time. Well, I had a very good education. I went to Beis Yaakov. I graduated with a Regents Diploma in 12th grade. And then I went to seminary, which was more of Hashkafa. It was more Jewish studies. But I had a great education. I did not feel that there were any gaps in my education. When I went to college, I was prepared. So there were no gaps. Absolutely not. Of women that are studying, but the difference is that they are really quiet. They don't, they don't really take a public position. I did take a public position years ago when I felt that it was important that the public know who my community is. Because if you don't go out and say who we are, then people are only going to see what they see in the media, the newspapers, or things that are negative that get out there. But the positive won't get out into the public. So I took a position a number of years ago, back in 2007, when I was working as a as a new attorney in Monroe, that I was going to reach out to the media and tell them who we are. And I found that it was effective. At first, I was very nervous because it's not really done. Hasidic women do not go out into the forefront, into the media. But I felt it was an eight last salt. It was a time to stand up because, like the Pasuk says, eight last salt la Hashem, techa, right? There are people come a time when you'll see that our Torah values are trampled. And it, it's wrong because that's not who we are as a community. So I came out and I went and I took a public position. But there are many, many women who are trained, who are doing things that you didn't have years ago. You just don't know about them, but I do. So there are different things that people go when they go to the Rebbe's. I never felt it was something that I had to ask for permission. We would go, we would say, my husband would say, my wife is studying, she wants a bracha, and she wants to help people. And that really was my goal. My goal was that I should be able to use my legal background and my legal degree to help people. And I was, Baruch Hashem, able to do that. I always worked together with Rabbanim, my clients were Hasidim, and I was able to bridge the gap, you know, fill in that space from, that was missing between my people and the professional world. Okay. And how is the community? You go Shabbos night, you walk around Borough Park, or you go to shul, you sit in the Zat machine. How do you feel that people look on what you do, on something so unique and, uh, and special? They are very excited. You know, they voted for me. My position didn't just come to me. I had to run. It was an election. And I had two opponents running against me. My community voted for me. Did I show you the endorsements that my husband got from Rabbanim? My husband ran around to Rabbanim and he got endorsements for me. This isn't something that just happened by itself. My community made it happen. They're very excited, very proud, the men and the women. And um, I'm very thankful to them. Without my husband helping me every step of the way, I couldn't have gotten to this point. In fact, I always say people make a big deal, I'm the first Hasidic woman, but the real big deal is my husband, because he's the first Hasid that supported his wife, financed my campaign, and didn't stop until I won the election. So he's really the hero of the story. And um, you need to have your family support, my husband, my children, 
They were with me every step of the way. And I'll say, if you find that your family is not supportive right away, be patient. Because what people are afraid of is, oh, is my wife, my mother going to be out of the house and, and she won't take the same care of her family as she did before. So my priority always was, I didn't want to compromise. I wanted a big challah for Shabbos. I wanted to still daven three times a day. I wanted to still be the mother for my children. I wanted nothing to change, even though I wanted to do something else. So my message to everybody is, don't compromise your values, not your religious values, not your family values. Be proud of who you are, and you can still be successful. It may take you longer, took me over 20 years, but ultimately that's, that's the truth. That's what will withstand the test of time.